CataractCoach.com, and we're looking at a case of a cataract, and the cataract we know ahead of time is going to be fibrous and tough to break apart. So we're putting some anesthetic in the eye, escorting the surface of the eye as well, and now filling the eye with our dispersive viscoelastic. Notice how we do an exchange. Now we're going to make our main incision here, fixating the eye with the ring. We're going to now use our diamond keratome to make a temporal phaco incision. There we go. Appropriate tunnel length. We're going to make our capsorexis. Important to have an appropriately sized capsorexis. I just did a mental measurement with the forceps. Those forceps, as you can tell, have marks on them, so I hold that at the beginning to give myself an idea of how big I want to make the rexus. And then, of course, during the surgery, during the rexus creation, I can go ahead and uh, re-gauge that size. So there's a complete rexus, and it's about five to five and a half millimeters in diameter. Hydrodissection is going to be carried out here. So there's a fluid wave coming across. It looks good. Tap the nucleus, another fluid wave. We certainly want this lens to be mobile. You want it to spin in the capsule bag in order to facilitate removal. So there it does spin, so we're pretty good. A little extra amount of viscoelastic, dispersive viscoelastic. Now just removing some mucus from the surface of the eye. For the chop settings here, we're going to use a high vacuum, high flow. So 50 or 60 cc's a minute for flow, a vacuum of at least 500 millimeters of mercury, and a high infusion pressure or bottle height. So buzz in with the phaco probe, place the chopper, and it just doesn't chop. So a little bit of a chop there. So rotate the nucleus, try again, buzz in, pass the chopper, go around the equator if we need to, and... That's a little better. It's still not really chopped. So it's okay. Rotate again. Buzz in again. Advance the chopper. Bring the two together. There's a finally a little bit of a chop, but didn't propagate fully through the nucleus. So rotate again. Get a good purchase. High vacuum. Get the chopper around. And now I think we finally have a piece that's reasonably mobile, but didn't come up. It's okay. Rotate again. So that's our technique. Rotate, chop, rotate, chop, rotate, chop, again and again. And that'll help break down the nucleus. Finally, we'll be able to get separation of one of these pieces. And as we can see, once that first piece is separated, we can bring that up to the iris plane and emulsify it with the phaco probe. Here's another piece that's brought up. So the technique is, if you don't get the first chop propagated through the nucleus, just keep chopping smaller bits. Rotate and chop, and then repeat. And eventually, you'll get the first piece to break off, and then it comes apart relatively easy. Again, be sure to use FACO power modulation, so we want to minimize the total energy placed in the eye. And when we're doing these nucleus removal pieces here, we're doing it at the iris plane. You don't want to be up against the corneal endothelium. Chopper in a protective position to keep the capsule bag at bay. Taking out the last piece of the nucleus here, and that looks pretty good. Now our time, we're ready for our irrigation aspiration. And so use the IA probe. So that went great. That's our technique. Again, fibrous nucleus. If you don't get the chop propagating fully through the nucleus, if you're unable to split it into halves or quarters, that's okay. Just keep rotating it and chop a little bit. Rotate and chop a little. And even though you're just scoring the nucleus or only partially separating it, once you have rotated enough and done a half a dozen or more chops, you'll start to get pieces breaking off. And then it disassembles relatively easily. Now the capsule bag is empty. We're going to fill it up with our um, cohesive viscoelastic. There's the big fill coming in. That looks great. And we're going to put our lens in the capsule bag. It's a single piece acrylic monofocal lens, fixating the eye here, and we'll advance the lens down the injector, and that looks great. Open up the lens within the capsule bag, and then rotate the lens to position it in the desired meridian. And here you can also see that the rexus does overlap the optic for 360 degrees, so we've achieved our goal there. 
Now going in with the IO probe one more time, going underneath the IO well, time to remove the viscoelastic from behind it. This being a cohesive viscoelastic should remove relatively easily. There it is. And then we'll remove the remainder of the dispersive viscoelastic in the front of the eye. Again, for this, you want high flow settings. It's that flow of fluid that goes through the eye that's going to help us remove all that dispersive viscoelastic. So, centering up the lens here looks pretty darn good. Just time to seal the incisions and we'll call it a day. So, interesting case, not too far out of the ordinary, but if you do get a nucleus like this where it's dense or it's fibrous and the chop just won't propagate through the nucleus completely, that's okay. Just rotate and do mini chops and then repeat. Thanks for watching.